Now, about 30 shops belonging to Ghanaians at the tiptoe lane at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle uh, this morning, uh, this dawn, broken into and destroyed by suspected uh, Nigerians. There's said to be tension at the enclave where hundreds of Ghanaian and Nigerian retailers ply their trade. It took police intervention to restore calm if Evans Chinui was there. About 30 of these shops owned by Ghanaians were broken into and destroyed this dawn by persons that claim are Nigerians. Now, these shop owners say that they believe these Nigerians are trying to take over their property. So they've also threatened to burn down their shops. Now, when I spoke to some of these Nigerian shop owners, they say they have no idea whatsoever what is happening. But they've also decided to close down their shops today to avoid being attacked by these angry Ghanaian shop owners. I had a call from one of the guys around, around 5 a.m., that people are here destroying our properties. I said, what is going on? So I rushed, I didn't even buff, I didn't do any, I rushed here, only to come and see uh, AMA sub-metro chief. I learned he's called Chief Alasa, with some men, destroying our properties all over, with cell phones and laptops here, everything is gone. We asked what is happening, and, and we were told that, uh, we don't know, he couldn't tell us anything. He said he's rather here to protect us. I said, if you are here to protect us, how come the people are destroying our town? You are standing here. So, in fact, we didn't allow him to go. We arrested him here, and then we called the authorities. And by what is going this thing started some months back. We reported this issue. We demonstrated against it when they started this building. We were told that it was unlawful for them to do the put on the house, uh, building over there. But we don't know. They've gone to bribe their way out. They've bribed all the people there, all the authorities involved. Yeah, this morning I was in the house before uh, somebody called me that I should come to circle. What's the reason? They said some people are demolishing our shops. If I don't come earlier, they will destroy all our properties and the goods. So I have to take motorbike and come. So when I got here, this is what I came to meet. They've broken all the metal door. They've broken my drawer. This is a drawer. Look at the drawer. They've broken the drawer. I have money inside. And my iPhone X, over five pieces, they've taken it. My glasses, they've taken everything. My laptop over here, they've taken it. You don't know who, who, who are they. I think the person they, they, they are. Will you imagine that? So we tried calling the, the AME boss. And when I came, I met him standing over there. He was saying that he was saying that he is watching over the place that nobody will take anything from here. Meanwhile, you brought the boss to come here. And before we could come here, he ordered the boss to run away. Meanwhile, the Nigerian shop owners have expressed shock at the turn of events. They had to close their shops for fear of being attacked by the angry Ghanaian shop owners. What happened? I'm very shocked. I don't know what happened. I just came in and entered my shop and prayed. So within a short while, some groups of, of guys just penetrated inside my shop and destroyed everything down. Push everything down. Everything was scattered. So many. Try to find out why they're doing that. I'm confused. They did not give me the orders. I was like trying to ask them why, what happened. They didn't give us orders. They was like even wanted to cause beyond. They, they did it aggressively, I guess. Did you try to fight back? Pardon? They did it aggressively. I mean, they came in aggressively. Did you try to fight back? I didn't fight anybody. I was like asking, what happened? Please, what happened? Because I don't know anything. I was just sitting there in my shop when the whole incident was going on. So what did you lose? Or what was destroyed in your shop? I lose a lot. Like what? My goods now. I lose a lot. I have not gone into stock check. What, what specifically do you sell here? We sell phone accessories here. So you lost how many phones? Can you tell me? I can't sell for now because they forced us to lock up our shops. So it looks like you're not ready to open the shop now. They don't allow us. I said we shouldn't open our shop for now. Have you contacted the police? <laughs> we are just looking after them for now. Henry Corte is a member of parliament for Ayawaso Central. He expressed disappointment and promised the traders whose property were destroyed to keep calm whilst officials get to the bottom of the matter. I'm told that uh, some people came to uh, attempted to like, demolish the shops around here. Uh, the motive behind it, I am yet to find out. Uh, I will conduct a full state investigations quickly as a member of parliament and uh, I've asked the assembly member in the meantime to speak to the traders to calm down. Let me 
uh, conduct the investigations, and then uh, the outcome we will know how to handle. In the meantime, I want to unreservedly apologize to the traders on behalf of uh, myself as a member of parliament for the area, and also on behalf of government, His Excellency, the President. And let me make this clear that our President believes in the creation of jobs for the good people of this country. Evidence of that is uh, afforestation, youth for employment, which we have done so far. Uh, YEA, we have recruited close to about 20,000 people. Uh, uh, planting for fruits, we have done. I can go on and on and on. And as you can see, we have introduced NAPCO, which is still trying to bring on board uh, gra reduce graduate unemployment. So uh, it is far first, or let me rephrase that, it can never be true that under the administration of His Excellency Nana Adodankwe Kufuadu, we will attempt to make life uncomfortable for traders. If you recall, a few years back, I was standing right here, making sure that I protect the traders, and that I shall continue to do. I want to assure them, you are unfortunate what has happened, but let me put it on record that there is no intention by my government, by myself as a member of parliament, to, to demolish shops. In events where that will even happen, I believe that we are in a democratic environment. There should be close collaboration, engagement between ourselves and the traders, and that will do. Now, I'm picking something at the background about Nigerians. Uh, we have trade and relations, bilateral arrangements with other countries, and I don't think that. Ghana would want to begin to treat Nigerians as not uh, human beings. So I want to plead with my circle traders, and I leave that in the hands of the assemblyman to see how, again, they can engage them so that what we need is their welfare, is peace in the area, and then a free market where everybody can make ends meet. So once again, I want to calm them down and also assure them of government's intention to ensure that these things will not occur. The, those are the scenes uh, from Seco right here, not very far from our studios here, by the way. I have in the studio here Osei Yawajman. He's the PRO for Uguta, that's Ghana Union Trade Association, and co-chairman co of mobile phone uh, dealers and accessories. Uh, mobile phone accessories dealers, right? Association. As dealers Association. You're welcome, sir, and thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank also you. here in the studio with me is Apia Dankwa, who is the secretary for Seco Traders Association. Mr. Dankwa, you're welcome as well. Thank you very much. Now, let me find out from you, two gentlemen, what is happening at Seco? What is it? Is it a demolition or is it stealing? I'll leave Mr. Apia Dankwa to okay. start. That. Okay, like, um, I'll say good afternoon to your viewers and I would say um, there is an issue going on in Seco. you know we have uh, the foreigners and the Ghanaians retail center mm -hmm. banter that we are fighting um, so in recent past we've been fighting this course and I hope you people have been hearing us on your news day in the out. Very well. Um, just up to this morning there is a, a building there is a, a, a plaza being built organized and sponsored by Nigerians a group of Nigerians have put money together and they have built a plaza behind um, Amankwa police station. Uh, there is this big plaza where the event took place and it, it was financed by the Nigerian. But be in front of those plaza they built, there are some traders selling there. Uh, some as old as 30, 35 years back, they have been trading on that lane. Um, some time back, it came to our notice that these Nigerians had the intention to build a shop, give it to Nigerians, which they are not allowed by law in the first place and give those places to their fellow Nigerians which we are fighting against. Then today we were told, led by an AME sub chairman, Alaji Hassan, they came there to demolish the structure of those people who, who have been there for the past 30 years just to pave way for our Nigerian brothers to trade where they are not 
supposed to trade. Okay, and I need to just step in here. Let me just indicate that we're trying to get the representatives of the Nigerians on this matter so we get a balanced uh, perspective of what's happening there. But this is obviously the Ghanaian perspective we're getting. We're still making attempts to reach uh, the representatives for the Nigerians. So please go ahead. So as of this morning, I was caught that this is what has happened. And um, led by Chief Hassan, like I, I did indicate earlier, had brought some men and they are demolishing on their own authority the shops of those Ghanaians who have been there for the past 30 years and over. So then we, we, we raised the red flag, we demonstrated, we shouted. Uh, this the, happened today? This, this very morning. Okay. The police came in, the Honorable Minister, uh, Interior Minister, Deputy Interior Minister, and the MP for uh, our place also came, and then I'm surprised at the kind of things that he's saying. Nobody is attacking any Nigerian. Okay, let's finish with the story you just told me. You said that uh, some Nigerians are allegedly putting up a building there. Yeah. They are the ones responsible for the demolition, you, you mean, of Ghanaian shops that are close to the building that you want to put up? They, they are putting the building there, which we try stopping them, but to no, to no avail because we, can't, we don't have the right to stop anybody from developing. But you have the right to report them to the authorities. Did you them, do that? They, they are, they are buildings were demolished. They, I don't know how they, they came about to put those buildings down. Nobody can tell her. I don't know which authority gave them the order. I think you can send your new team. I believe they don't, they don't even have permit to develop, to develop that, that place up as um, a shop, mm. uh, to be precise. Then the, the Ghanaians have been there for the past 30 years. Okay. So after demolishing their private property, they intended to break the uh, Ghanaians uh, retail shops that are built in front of the shops that they have newly uh, putting up. And those buildings were being financed by Nigerians. Okay, so sure. this is what you're saying. We, we, we don't have a, a way of, we have not verified that bit of the information. But then some of the Nigerians that my colleague spoke to, a circle, said that their shops were broken into. Now the story you're telling me is that Ghanaians' shops were demolished. How do we reconcile the two? Um, I'll, I'm very disappointed and did, I'm, I'm surprised to hear this that a Nigerian shop has been broken into. After the incidents, the, we instructed them to lock all shops, all containers. Everybody's shops was locked after the incidents. All the shops there was locked. There is no single Nigerian whose shop has been broken into. For what? To do what? After what happened, the angry Ghanaians, the association leaders, the AMA, even the assembly member, we locked, every shop was locked within that location. So it's not as if we were, what, what were we So the shops that we saw in the video, uh, and I don't know if we can pull that up, but shops that we saw in the video that were, uh, that looked like they had been broken into, those shops, who... who those who, shops belong to Ghanaians, and these are the shops that I'm saying have been there for the past 30 years. Okay. And behind that shop is the, the building, is what the you building say is where, the plaza. Is the plaza where they, they, they are developing into. So the Ghanaians. gentleman, the Nigerian guy who was speaking about her things getting stolen and being removed, etc., is is he somebody you know? No, you I'm don't seeing know him for the first time, and probably but he's saying that his things have been have probably been, have maybe stolen. after here we need to look for him. I have the president number, but it's on my other phone. I okay. wish we could have called him, but okay. probably after yeah, here. Yeah. So 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 let's finish with you finally. You were saying you you had a response to what the MP was saying. Yeah, concerning the shops, mm -hmm. I really am I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what the MP is talking about in a way. In a way, he's talking about n government will not stop us from trading. And we are not saying government is stopping us from trading. We are rather putting pressure on government to make sure that the GIPC law works, that the foreign retailers in our market must leave the market because it's not in their place to be retailing phones or accessories with us in the market. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I was a bit of confused as to where he was coming from. Okay. What we are fighting for is our right that the constitution gives us. That retailing, petty trading, is the sole prerogative of Ghanaians. And that is what we are fighting for. We okay. are not against government in any way whatsoever. Okay, I'll, I'll engage you momentarily on that. But let me bring Ms. Jose uh, in, in, into this matter. What, what, what do you make of what's happening? Do you share in, 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 this, in the sentiments that uh, Mr. Dankwa here has? Yes. I do share in his sentiments. Mm. I was called from home in the morning. So, in fact, I didn't know anything was happening until they called me. Now, when they called me, I was on my way to the Ministry of Trade. Mm. We have a trade committee 
that is it is the one that was set up to look into the issues uh, surrounding the the GIPC law and okay. retail trade right. in um, in fact I'm the vice chairman of that committee okay and so we we had a meeting this morning and when I was going to the meeting that's where I heard all these things happening at SEC. In fact, circle is a hot spot. And I would advise that no official should try putting fuel into already made fire. Mm. Because anything can trigger a circle at any time. So for the past two months, mm -hmm. I've been trying to cool it down so that nothing happens there. Mm. So when I heard rather Nigerians attacking Ghanaians a circle. Is that what you heard? That is what I heard because um, that building, I know the story behind it. Mm. And if they are breaking things in front of that building, mm -hmm. then it's Nigerians. If they are not doing it themselves, then they have hired people to come and do that job. Do you suspect that I but don't suspect. I know. Because what's the that, evidence? Building, mm. that building, like I said, we've spoken a lot about that building. Mm. And that issue even went to Guta. And we had to stop them from doing this. I personally have spoken to Chief Okai about this building. Because we had a meeting in the, the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. And it came up. And we spoke about it. And he came there, Chief Okan came there to stop this building. They didn't stop. Waited. They wrote stop work on the building. And they didn't stop. And they waited for them to finish the building. Accusing us. Not coming to complain to them that they were still being there. So the issue really is what? The issue is that the Nigerians are trying to build, from your perspective, they're trying to build a plaza and they're breaking other shops belonging People to Ghanaians. People who have stayed there for 30 years, so 25 that they be, years. So that they'll be able to uh, rent out the, their building to other people. You see, and it they has came, already been rented out to Nigerians. You see, already. initially, when we spoke, we spoke to them, we told them that if they want to keep that building, at least they should open the entrance in the house so that they could do their business in the house. And these boys can stay at where they are and also do So for business. you, it will be okay that they, let, they allow those who are living in front of, or those whose shops are in front of the plaza to be there, uh, whilst they also, you know, uh, you know maintain the, 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 the building there, even though you, 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 you still insist that it is, is, they, they, don't have, they may not even have a permit. Th that is if that is if they have complied with all laws of Ghana. Okay. And the GIPC and law act allows them to be there. Then okay. we don't have a problem with it. Okay. Where are we on this issue concerning Nigerians or foreigners trading within the space reserved for Ghanaians? Where are we? Because it looks like that is really at the bottom of the story. Where we are at we are close, like, um, you know, when you come to circle, those foreigners who are trading in our market, they are not supposed to be there. What's going to happen from today, based on what has happened today? You actually have said that <laughs> circle is a hot spot. Yeah. You, nobody at all, nobody should fuel the hotspot that you say there is. What is going to happen now? We've seen what happened today, and it looks like today business will be very slow for a lot of people. What is going to happen in the next few days? What, where do we go from here? Let's get to the bridge, then we cross it. No, we're already at the bridge. Here we are. No, here we are with the chaos. We, we, are, at, we, are, getting, at, at, we are getting to the bridge. We haven't gotten to the I, bridge I yet. think we are at the bridge. We, we see, we've seen what happened. I mean, that's, that's very serious. What you, we see, just saw. you see, as at now, I'm talking about that because... Kumasi Swami mm -hmm. magazine is burning. We, we know about that story as well, which is what we've yes. been following it. And up. that's why we had an emergency meeting of the committee today. So what's going to happen from what has happened today? W what next? In fact, I have been told to come and try and calm it down. So you're coming? That is what I'm trying to do. 
So I don't want anybody to say anything that will fuel it. I see. L let me come to you, Mr. Dankwa. What's going to happen from the uh, Circle Traders Association? You are the ones who are selling there. That's your association. Yeah, What's going true. to happen? Um, so now you belong to both Ghanaians and Nigerians, right? Because the Cer Traders Association, or does it yeah, yeah, just yeah, consist yeah. of Ghanaians? No, we don't. We don't we register don't Nigerians. Them. You don't register don't Nigerians yeah, don't in, the in the association. No, no. So it's just a Ghanaian. It's a Ghanaian yeah, it's association. Ghanaian. Okay. What's the way forward from your the perspective? The way forward is, I think you you just uh, spoke about Swami. I think I think they are teaching us the way. My my senior man. No, what happened in Swami is is, uh, is not it's not such a good thing. So if you it, say they're teaching not, you the it's, way, it's, it's, it's so a, it's if a good somebody thing. goes to fuel it, that that means we want Swami to come here. It's, it's it's not a bad thing. The people in Swami are in their right. Let's not forget that the uh, constitution. Let, let's talk about circle. We, we no, need to I'm wrap coming, up. I'm, I'm right out of time. To circle. Uh, right. The people in Swami are defending their constitutional rights, which we in circle can also defend. Say. How do we move on from here peacefully? Because now, now it looks as if the Nigerians are using the police and those in authority to intimidate we the to intimidate we the Ghanaians. Is that how you feel? That is how we feel. We feel intimidated. We feel like we are being uh, taken for like a laughing stock because they see us. We we, we 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 try to agitate. Then the next moment the police come in and then we they they they, they bring the things down and before you realize they have opened their shop again. Now. Yeah. We, we are not going to tolerate that again. And if, if they are not going to fight for us, we are going to fight for ourselves. Because we cannot go to any country apart from Ghana and do what they are doing here in our country. In Nigeria, okay. they don't give us that privilege of an opportunity. You cannot go and retail in any Nigerian market. There is no Ghanaian there. Okay. We Mr. also Dankwa. not allow seeing here in Ghana. Mr. Dankwa, thank you very much. you have any final words, sir, Mr. Osei? Yes. All I want to say is this. If you are a foreigner in Ghana, try and obey our laws and we are telling our authorities to make our laws work okay because if they don't work that is where the problem will start we don't want people taking their destinies into their own hands Hopefully they won't have to. Uh, Mr. Oseyao is a PRO for Ghana Union of Traders Association. He's also co-chair of the Mobile Phone and Accessory uh, Traders Association there. Uh, also here in the studio with me has been Apia Dankwa, who's the secretary for the Seco Traders Association. Now, Mr. Dankwa here says that they feel intimidated. Traders, uh, Ghanaian traders in Seco feel intimidated. They believe that the Nigerians uh, some way, somehow using uh, authorities or government officials and the police to to threaten them and to intimidate them. They're saying that they will not allow that to happen. We're here to get the, the Nigerian Association on this. Like I indicated, we've been trying to get through to them. We've not been successful as yet. When we do, we'll let you know what they also think from their perspective. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you.